Hey, do you recall hearing about Snowmageddon in Texas? That was the historical, unprecedented winter storm we had back in February 2021. During this storm, many people across the state found themselves with no power and no heat, some for well over a week. Temperatures across a large part of the state went well below zero, which is kind of uncharacteristic for the state of Texas. And here at Terry Hill Farm, we recorded a low temperature of negative five degrees, and that's never happened. Many of our neighbors believe that they were fully prepared for this kind of extended power outage. They had home backup generators that ran on propane, and they figured however long the power was out, they would have plenty of propane for that. But they soon found out that their propane storage was limited because of their use of propane for heating and for their generators. And then after you know three or four days, they pretty much ran out of uh, propane for both heat and electricity generation. What's worse is it was weeks before they could get a propane truck out to refill the propane because the roads were messed up. So when we built our new home here at Terry Hill Farm, we set out to design a self-sufficient energy system that could withstand the most severe storms and could get us through another snowmageddon if that ever happens. Of course, that's probably unlikely we'll see that again in our lifetime. So how are we doing that? Let me tell you. Hey, welcome back to Terre Haute Farm, where we are truly living two steps from off-grid. Looking at all the options we had for reliable power backup, the best choice we found was solar power and a home battery backup system. This gives us the ability to power the house and recharge the batteries every day with sun, or if there's no sun, we can use any grid power we have, or we can recharge the batteries with a generator. Being able to create electricity without external inputs from fuel or grid power was the only way we found to build a truly self-sufficient and sustainable power system for our home. Hey, we'd like you to be a part of our daily farm happenings. So please take a second and hit that subscribe button and you'll be the first to know about our new upcoming videos or whatever we're doing out here on the farm that's crazy and fun to look at. We really appreciate you being a part of our projects and it helps our channel grow as we grow the farm. So thanks. Hey, as we've mentioned in the past, we have grid power at the front of our property, but it's not very reliable. Outages occur every few weeks, and we're certain to be without power if there's any kind of storm for a few days, a few hours, or sometimes even a week. So a reliable backup power system can eliminate all the inconveniences from our unreliable grid power. Plus, it can save us a lot of money on our electric bill. We started out with a small DIY backup solar system that supplied most of our critical loads in a blackout, and this worked really well. It, the only problem was it had limited battery storage. You can see a video we did of that system here. We were so impressed though with the results from the Cheapo Flow 3000 project that we decided to expand. So we upgraded to build a system that would power our home for an unlimited period of time without grid power. So our first step was to build a battery bank and increase the size of our power inverter. So we upgraded to a 6,000 watt split phase inverter, EG4-6000EX, and that should give us enough to meet our typical electric needs, which we've monitored over the last year to figure out what we use. We looked into many battery options and brands, including build-it-yourself DIY batteries, uh, but due to time constraints and UL listing and safety concerns, and based on our great experience with the EG4 Life Power 4 battery, we went with more of those from Signature Solar. The batteries were delivered from Signature Solar and the, the rack came about a week later. So if you're ordering, understand they don't come together necessarily. Both arrived by freight carrier and are loaded on pallets. These are heavy. The batteries weigh about 100 pounds each and the battery rack weighs almost 200 pounds. So you're gonna want a helper if you're moving these, unloading these, or setting these up. Installation wasn't difficult, but it was time consuming and there aren't any really good instructions that come with the battery or the rack. We found the EG4 manuals online, and those were helpful. We also looked at some YouTube videos, and those were helpful as well. You need to take your time to make sure you install these batteries correctly. You'll need a torque wrench for the terminal screws here and in the bus bar. They have to be torqued to an exact spec, and you want a torque wrench that can go down to 60 inch pounds, not foot pounds. I found a nice and portable one like this on Amazon, and it worked well. You'll need to provide cables to connect your inverter and I went with four aught cables since I anticipate upgrading the system at a later date and these can handle a lot of power. Good cables and quality lugs are expensive, but don't skimp on these. This is where most fire problems start with bad lugs and bad connections. You can also invest in your own crimper and make your own cables if you choose to do that. 
For safety, you really need to include a T-class fuse with your battery bank. I sized my fuse to a 300 amp fuse based on the size of the cables. DC shorts can create massive arcs and some fuses just can't stop those arcs. So you don't want to skimp on your fusing and you want to get your T-class fuse as close to your batteries as possible. Once I got the batteries installed and connected the communication cables, I kept the batteries on for a day so that they could equalize and balance. I also used the monitoring software that comes with EG4 batteries and that helped me figure out that all the cells in the batteries were working properly. This will give you the differential voltage for each cell and it helps to make sure that the, the voltage is equalized before you actually hook the batteries up into your system. At this point, I hooked the batteries up to the bus bar with the cables that come with the batteries. The terminal screws in the bus bar are not clearly marked and there can be differences in the bus bar depending upon which rack you get. So make sure that, that you have the correct screw for each terminal. And remember, these copper bus bars are soft metal, so you don't want to over torque the screws. That's why you want to use that torque wrench. Torquing the screws and the terminals to the correct torque is critical to getting the proper terminal connection. The batteries are grounded to the rack by these, these tab screws here, but you want to make sure with a continuity tester that the batteries are actually grounded. So test each one of these uh, once you get them installed. Once I installed the terminal cables, the T-class fuse, uh, the, and connected the inverter, I went back through and torqued all the connections again to make sure they were good. Once I confirmed that, I turned on the inverter and tested out the batteries. Once everything was working, I charged up the battery bank and everything went smoothly. Inverter worked, batteries worked, everything was great. Based on the initial testing so far, uh, with five of these 5120 watt hour batteries, uh, it meets the needs of our house for about one to two days without any charging from grid or solar. I'm using Solar Assistant to monitor everything remotely. I've also got the EG4 uh, Life Power 4 communication hub in here so I can just check the state of charge instantly by walking up and pushing the button. If you have any questions or comments about our batteries or the system setup, please leave them in the comments. So our next step is to upgrade our solar panels. So we have a pallet of solar panels coming in today and we'll be making a video on that showing how we set up the battery system, the inverter, and the solar panels together. So stay tuned for our next video as we'll finish up this system and from Terre Hill Farm where we're truly living two steps from off-grid we really appreciate you watching this video and hope to see you back here soon.